the life of Abraham, the father of many nations. Dear friends, today's story is about a person who lives on in the minds of people even today, the father of many nations and the friend of God, Abraham. In today's story, we will see how Abraham, born Abram, in the year of the Chaldeans, became the father of many nations and a friend of God. Abram was born in the tenth generation of Shem after the flood when Noah's sons multiplied on the earth. Abram's father was Terah, and brothers were Nahor and Haran. Abram was born in the year of the Chaldeans. This land was also known as Mesopotamia and later came under Babylonian rule. This place is located in and around present-day Iraq. This land was located near the great river Euphrates. This river was one of the four branches of the river God created to water the Garden of Eden, which he made for Adam and Eve. It was in one of the beautiful places of that time that Abraham lived with his family. Abraham's brother Haran had died earlier. So Haran's son Lot was with Abram. Abram's wife Sarai was the daughter of his father, though not of his mother. As Sarai was barren, they did not have children. It was Noah's family that experienced the presence and protection of God and escaped the flood, right? But when man multiplied on the earth, they again went far from God. Their hearts turned to foreign gods. Even Abram's father turned to foreign gods. Heartbroken at this, God decided to reveal himself to mankind again. God chose Abram for that. Thus, the God of glory appeared to Abram. Even while serving idols, Abram must have felt that there was no meaning in them and that the God who creation reveals was someone else. That must be why Abram did not doubt the God who was revealed to him. When God told him to leave his country and kindred and father's house and go to the land he will show him, Abram did not hesitate. He decided to set out. But with Abram was his father Terah and nephew Lot. They came to the land of Haran in Mesopotamia and settled there. There Terah died and he was 250 years old. After the flood, man's lifespan decreased drastically. Don't you remember, Noah lived 950 years? Thus, when they continued living in Haran after his father's death, God called Abram again. He commanded them to leave the country they are living in now and go to the land he will show them. As the Lord commanded, Abram set out. When he set out from there, Abram was 75 years old. When Abram left Haran, he took not only Sarai his wife, but also Lot his nephew and all the possessions they accumulated in Haran. And so they journeyed all the way to the land of Canaan, which God had promised him. And the inhabitants of the land were called Canaanites. There God appeared to Abram again. God told Abram, who did not have children and was 75 years old, that he will give this land as an inheritance to his offspring. The land of Canaan was on the other side of the Euphrates. So, he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent between Bethel and Ai. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon his name. Abram lived all his life in tents. There was a reason for that. Even though he reached the place God promised him and became wealthy there, God's friend Abram was looking forward to the city that has foundations whose designer and builder is God. After some time, there was a famine in the land. And when the famine became severe, Abram decided to go to Egypt. But he realized that his wife's beauty could threaten his life. So, Abram told Sarai to say to anyone who asks that Abram was her brother. That way his life would be saved, and what was said would be half truth. Thus they journeyed and reached Egypt. Things happened just as Abram feared. All the Egyptians who saw her, including the princes of Pharaoh, praised her beauty. Even before Pharaoh, they praised her. And Sarai had to go to Pharaoh's house. Thinking Abram was Sarai's brother, he treated him well. 
But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai. After knowing the truth, Pharaoh gave Sarai back to Abram and sent him away with all he had. Thus they came back to Canaan. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver and gold. Like Abram, Lot also became very rich. Their possessions were so great that they could not live together, and there was strife between both their herdsmen. At that time, the Canaanites and Parasites were living among them. It isn't good for the brothers to fight in front of them, right? So Abram talked to Lot and decided to separate from each other so that there will be no strife between them. Abram gave Lot the freedom to choose the land which he likes. So Lot lifted his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the land of Egypt. Even though they came back from Egypt after having been there during the time of famine, Lot's mind was still full of Egypt. So he chose the land which looked as good as Egypt to him. Thus Lot journeyed east. Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. There he built a house and settled. The men of Sodom were wicked and great sinners against the Lord. Lot, who chose what was pleasing to his eyes, ended up in a place whose inhabitants were against God. Abram, however, still lived in Canaan. After a few years, the surrounding kings fought against Sodom and Gomorrah and captured their inhabitants and their possessions. In this, Lot and his possessions were also included. When Abram learned of this, he led forth his trained men, born in his house, 318 of them, and went and pursued them. He defeated them and brought back all the people and their possessions, and Lot went back to Sodom. A special person came to welcome Abram who returned victorious from the battle. That was the king of Salem and priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek. While Abram grew older and still did not have children, God repeatedly appeared to him and assured him that this land would be given to his offspring and that they will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Abram believed in God and it was credited to him as righteousness. But as time passed, Sarai, who doubted her body's ability to have children, became impatient. She decided to give her servant Hagar to Abram as his wife. Abram did not oppose. Thus, Hagar became pregnant with Abram's child. When Hagar learned that she had conceived, she despised her mistress. Thus, they had problems between them. But according to God's command, Hagar continued in that place. And Hagar gave birth to a son. Abram named him Ishmael. When Ishmael was born, Abram was 86 years old. When he was 99 years old, God appeared to Abram again. And God again confirmed to him that he will fulfill his promise. He also said that because he will be the father of nations, his name will no longer be Abram but Abraham. He also told that Sarai will be the mother of nations so she shall be called Sarah. Then one day, Abraham was sitting at the door of his tent, in the heat of the day at Mamre. He lifted up his eyes, and three men were standing in front of him. Abraham ran from the tent door to meet them. He quickly made bread and meat and set it before them. They asked for Sarah and said that at the same time next year, she will have a son. Then the men set out from there and looked down towards Sodom. Abraham went with them to set them on their way. Of the three men, two of them were angels of God, and one was God himself. The angels went to Sodom. Abraham stood before the Lord. God told Abraham of his decision to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Remembering that his nephew Lot was in that place, Abraham pleaded with God for that city. God promised that if there are ten righteous people in that place, he will spare it. But there were not even ten people. So God sent judgment against the people who were wicked and great sinners. Those cities were burnt up by the Lord. But God rescued Lot and his family from it. But Lot's wife showed disobedience and turned into a pillar of salt. Then, according to his promise, the Lord visited Sarai. 
Sarah conceived and gave birth to a son, and Abraham named him Isaac. Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. When Isaac grew up, Ishmael mocked and persecuted him. When Sarah learnt of this, she told Abraham to cast out Hagar and Ishmael. Abraham did not like this because it concerned his son. But in this, God told Abraham to listen to Sarah. Abraham obeyed that and sent them away. As years passed, the Lord decided to test Abraham. Abraham liked Isaac a lot because he was born in his old age. God commanded Abraham to sacrifice that son as a burnt offering. Abraham obeyed that and rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took his son and went to the mountain of Moriah. Even when God wanted him to sacrifice his son, of whom God himself had spoken, through Isaac shall your offspring be named, Abraham did not lose his faith in God. Abraham, who believed that God was able to raise him from the dead, built an altar on the mountain and laid the wood in order, and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood, and took the knife to slaughter his son. But God, who saw Abraham's strong faith, stopped him from killing his son. He gave him his son back, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. Behind him, a ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Then they went back. Seeing that Abraham was willing to obey God no matter what, God swore by himself that through his offspring the earth will be blessed. Then his wife Sarah died at the age of 127. Abraham gave his brother Nahor's granddaughter, Rebekah, to Isaac as wife to comfort him after his mother's death. Thus Isaac was consoled. After Sarah's death, Abraham remarried and had six children. But as Abraham grew older, he gave gifts to his other sons and sent them away from his promised son Isaac. Then, at the age of 175, Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Even though Abraham died, God fulfilled his promise at the right time. To make Abraham the father of many nations, God gave Jesus our Lord as his offspring. By sacrificing Jesus as a perfect sacrifice on Calvary for the whole world, God gave mankind the blessing of salvation. If any of you listening have not yet received that gift, don't delay any further. There is no other door to enter the Father's presence. So, before the unexpected guest, death, comes to take our life, we need to make that salvation ours. May the Lord help us do that. God bless you.